talk about the baseline logic more more accurately um, there's a lot to a baseline um, or there's not <laughs> they did all sorts of things um, that was a really confusing baseline it was one of those ones that's all over the place the baseline logic is simple we need to have a way to assess whether or not the independent variable or the intervention that we're using has been effective um, we're not doing large group analysis so we're not going to take a pretest and lump of 47 responses together and get an average and compare that using the t-test or an ANOVA or something else um, to the, the intervention, right? To, to the intervention group or the post-test or whatever, right? We're not going to do that because we're using single subject logic, which simply means that we're going to compare one person to themselves and analyze one person at a time, not necessarily compare to themselves. We're just going to analyze one person at a time. That's single subject logic. So in order to pull that off, we need a baseline, okay? So we got to figure out where people are at. Well, the first thing you say is, how do you get one? It's simple. You measure, right? You measure, you count, you get frequencies, latencies, durations, meow. Uh, <laughs> uh, so maybe in those other videos you've caught um, maybe some responses, meow, that um, have to do with things um, like meow. Uh, maybe it's a baseline. Maybe, maybe if you've watched enough of our videos, you understand that we use behavioral principles to teach you behavioral principles. Um, so meow, one of those things was this meow thing that we were doing in these other videos, meow. And you could argue that that other video, meow, was a baseline that this video about baselines um, is not necessarily another baseline meow uh, for the meow behavior, but it could be an intervention and we could be assessing it. Anyway, beside the point. So let's just go ahead and take the logic first. We're gonna track behavior for a while without doing anything. A while, what does that mean, right? Usually three, four, five, 10, 12, 47 data points. I don't know, lots and lots of data points in order to be able to predict what's coming next, all right? So what do we need to worry about first? We need to worry about steady state logic, all right? So steady state logic, is the behavior stable, right? So stable, I mean, horizontal, is it, is it relatively stable? It's gonna go up and down a little bit. So you got up and downs, it's gonna go up and down a lot, right? Uh, or versus a lot. We want nice, stable stuff, okay? We want to be able to predict what's coming next. There's some mathematical things that you can use to figure out stability, but really it's a visual analysis, it's an ocular analysis, so just take a look at your data. If it feels stable, it is. Um, you also have trends that you can worry about in steady state responding, right? So is our trend and our baseline increasing, or is it decreasing, or is it stable, right? So we've got those different things. As long as it, everything's nice and clear and predictable, then we can move on. So once we've got our good baseline, now we're gonna start our intervention phase, boom, right? So we start that intervention phase, and then we figure out what's happening, all right? So we do the new independent variable, we see if we can get a modification of behavior out of it, and we're gonna compare that the intervention phase to the, uh, um, to the baseline, right? So how, what, what's the point, right? This, this is the core logic that we use to establish experimental control and independent, or inter uh, uh, sorry, internal validity. <coughs> we use this comparison, right? Now it gets really complex when we get into the methodology of how you do it, A, B, A, B, and um, A, B, A, C, A, C, B, A, C, A, C, all these different things that we'll get into later. But right now we're just looking at A, B, right? So the baseline is the A condition and B is the intervention condition. So what we wanna know during baseline is, um, do we have predict, can we predict what's coming, right? Um, and then can we um, replicate, and then uh, the other, what, are, what are they, prediction, Verification, oh, prediction, verification, replication, it's kind of fun. So anyway, prediction, can we predict what's coming next uh, based on what we have in our baseline? Uh, verification, uh, then we verify that the independent variable is having an effect by comparing it back to our baseline and in replication, can we remove that independent variable or whatever the case may be and then bring things back to baseline? Can we verify that the independent variable had an effect by bringing the behavior back to baseline condition when you put those baseline conditions back in place, right? And then, so that's the replication. So the baseline logic is really how our entire field was built, right? So the, when Skinner got going on this stuff, he really needed a way to develop a new methodology that wasn't based on, on statistics, that was based on actual control of responses. The baseline logic allowed for that. So again, just do a quick recap. Baseline, you want stability, you're doing trend analyses, um, and then you're switching conditions 
and then you're making comparisons across from that condition back to the other condition. There's a lot more to it than that, and we'll come back to it when we get into all the methodology stuff. And you know what, folks? I think, I absolutely think it's time for a beer. We're tired, we're wet, we're cold, and I think we got to go there to O'Doherty. And we're going to, I think we're going to shoot a video in O'Doherty. I don't know if they're going to let us, but we're going to find out. So anyway, enough of this baseline meow being out here in the damn rain meow. And let's get out of here and go have a beer. All right? See ya. But the beer's over there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's what happens when you're in film. <laughs>